although you can't see it on any map, southwestern Minnesota is an island. There was never a time when we weren't out of the way. There were the places on the map you had to set out for deliberately, the places you would never happen upon. It is not the kind of thing we like to admit to company, but there are advantages in islands. The prairie is like a daydream. It is one of the few plainly visible things which you can't photograph. No camera lens can take in a big enough piece of it. The prairie landscape embraces the whole of the sky. The prairie can't be appreciated anymore. It is too subtle, too vast, too intimate. It isn't accessible by automobile. You've got to get down on your knees to see some of its best features. And even in churches, people don't get down on their knees anymore. To live on the prairie is to daydream. It is the only conceivable response to such immensity. It is when we are smallest that our daydreams come quickest. Paul Gurko is a writer who lives in Adrian, a small town in southwestern Minnesota. He was raised on a prairie farm. I was born in um, Montevideo, Minnesota, in a two-room house. And I went to a one-room country school and um, lived in a, what is now an extraordinary kind of isolation until I went off to college, which uh, was an act of defiance. He left the prairie then, intending never to return, but he did return. Four years ago, he became managing editor and part owner of the Worthington Daily Globe. During the years away, he attended the University of Minnesota and worked as a journalist in Minneapolis and Washington, D.C. But he didn't feel at home in big cities, so in 1976, with his wife and daughter, he came back to the prairie. He has great feeling for this land, which he speaks about in his writing, and in his newspaper. This sounds like uh, prairie populism, but it's true. The reason anybody lives in Minnesota is that this is a place which produces food. It's a uh, state whose existence is uh, built on the productivity of its land. I know that this place is unrewarding to uh, a great many people, and I know that it's unrewarding to many people who live here. But for me, I think it just happens to be the right place. One of the things I think this place offers is the simple quality of quietness. A dog barking uh, miles away will uh, make a sound that comes to you as something just isolated and precise because it's a, and that quietness is important to my sense of myself. I know that. The thing we have here is um, the feeling of connectedness with uh, natural things, with the land itself, and a um, almost fatalistic sense of uh, our fortunes being tied to how well the land does. One of the things I have tried to say in my own writing over and over again uh, is that you have to be attached to a place. You have to be uh, settled down into something 
rooted into something. If you're ever going to uh, do anything worthwhile as a human being, The Prairie Writers is a group of writers, including, I would hope, myself, have insisted that if we've got a problem uh, with our um, national culture, uh, it's the problem that we have divorced ourselves from our bodies. And that begins when we divorce ourselves from the land. Um, we, we turn into people who are all head and uh, and very little heart. You can't be disconnected from a place and passionate about the world. You can't just float around in the atmosphere. You've got to be tied down somewhere. I feel tied down to this prairie. I wouldn't say that the um, that the the way to be connect to become connected with the world again is to go to a prairie. The way to become connected with the world again is to find a place like my prairie may be very different and then to become attached to it. That's the thing that counts. I think the first moment when that um, sense of connectedness came um, vividly into my mind was the first time when I went up to the top of the Blue Mounds at the uh, spring equinox and it was very dark and very silent and I sat through a long period in the cold while the sky got gradually brighter and um, then in one glorious instant there it was that sun pointing straight down that fence and it plopped over the edge of the horizon it was an absolutely magical moment And I said to myself, I understand a feeling that I know somebody 10,000 years ago had in exactly this same spot at exactly this same moment in the year. It was just a magical, magical moment. That was the place for me where I think I began to understand it.